on this episode, we're going to be showing Deontay Wilder a little bit about who he is and where he's from. In order to do that, we're going to go off of where he was born and how tall he is. The average height in the United States for a so-called African American is five foot nine inches for a male. Deontay Wilder is six foot seven, damn near a foot taller than the average. I'm putting emphasis on his height because it's going to come into play and show him where he's from, basically. That the people originally from where he was born at was that tall. We're going to go over here to a book written in 1850 called The History of Alabama and incidentally that of Georgia and Mississippi from the earliest period by Albert J. Pickett. So it's during the time in the 1500s when DeSoto was going through Alabama. It says the next day advancing within six miles of the temporary residence of Tuscaloosa, a hope was made in the woods. It says Tuscaloosa was 40 years of age, of great stature, with immense limbs. He was spare around the waist, and his whole form was admirably proportioned. His countenance was grave and severe. After King Tuscaloosa and DeSoto became acquainted, they were about to march on to the next town. So it says right here that an officer was sent among the horses to find one large enough to sustain the giant Indian. A large pack horse, the property of the governor, was selected. It says the chieftain, who was a head taller than any of his attendants, mounted upon his horse with his feet nearly trailing on the ground. On a side note, I want to point out that it says the Indians of Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and Mississippi were so similar in form, mode of living, and general habits in the time of DeSoto and of others who succeeded him in penetrating these wilds that they will all be treated on the pages of this chapter as one people. Now we're going to go into the section of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which where Deontay Wilder is from and what Indians were there and basically how they look the same as Deontay Wilder. It says the Choctaws and Chickasaws descended from a people called the Chickamaucas who were among the first inhabitants of the Mexican Empire. So that's royalty in Mississippi and Alabama right there. And it goes on to talk about how they left there and made their way to Mississippi and southwestern Alabama. Now it says these people were more slender in their forms than other tribes. The men were raw boned and astonishingly active. None could excel them in the ball play or run as fast upon level ground. Both sexes were well made and the features of the females were lively and agreeable. Well I just had to point this out since the brother thinks he's an African. Don't know his rich historical value being a big dark skinned brother six foot seven from Tuscaloosa Alabama. But this is who you come from. The Choctaw people that were raw boned and astonishingly active that none could excel them in the ball play or run as fast upon level ground. You want to let a European explorer now give you your identity when he don't know his beginning or yours? So you call yourself an African? You are not an African. You were before there was an Africa. We know what you mean when you say I'm an African. We understand that. But you got to grow up now into a deeper knowledge. You guys get a sneak peek at Tuscaloosa. You know that Tuscaloosa, the Muscogean language elements, Tuscaloosa meant black warrior. This was their chief, notable for leading the Battle of Mabala at his fortified village against the Spanish conquistador Fernando de Soto. You know that Hernando de Soto, he's very famous, got the Montezuma and the whole deal, but you know where. Uh, Native American, it's a Mississippi chief, and it is what is now the United State of Alabama. And a true story when we were little, it seemed like everybody knew about Tuscaloosa because there used to be a joke uh, how come the elephant went to the dentist? Oh, it's Tuscaloosa. And, you know, to keep, you know, a little bit of humor before we get into some, boy, some, this is September 4th and the teaching's just going to keep coming. I decided, you know, they really are going to great efforts to keep us dumbed down and to, to break out of it. We wanted to get to this. I mean, 
Hernando de Soto in Alabama right after he left Montezuma and we don't think that it was a planned invasion planned invasion and the black history of the black warrior how come you guys didn't join me last February when I was pioneering black hidden history month I was trying some people helped me Matt thanks so much you know hope you're up for next February, you know, the DeSoto exhibition, it's that guy. They met as equals, governors to royals to royals, except one was still living the ways of the peace. And then they got, you know, they heard of the double crosses and tried to fight back, but they didn't have it. What I thought was funny that you before we move on you know is the you know how wikipedia plays down everything is they're trying to rewrite it as a different version of the uh troy that's how i would put it with the uh, even calling building the fort Mirba, uh there in alabama a trojan horse but this is how they you know kind of a balcony on a mound at one of the squares so that his headdress was like a Moors, which gave him an aspect of authority. He also wore a plote, or mantle of feathers down to his feet, very imposing to the people who knew and like we do now know what it means, seated on some high cushions. Many of his principal men were as tall as he, some say a foot and a half taller. He was as tall as that Tony and Tessio of the Emperor, our Lord's Guard, and well proportioned, a fine and comely figure of a man. He had a son, a young man as tall as himself, but more slender. Before this chief, there stood always an Indian of graceful mien holding a parasol on a handle, something like a round and very large Flay pen, flay fan, with a cross similar to that of the Knights of the Order of St. John of Rhodes. What? I'm interrupting the reading now to say, what? It was in the middle of a black field and the cross was white. And although the governor entered the plaza and alighted from his horse and went up to him, Chief Tuscaloosa did not rise, but remained passive in perfect composure, as if he had been a king. That's what was the 1544 reaccount from Rodrigo Rangel. That's all we're allowed to know about that episode, but it was a type, you know, and we know it wasn't that type of a fort. Malabians. Oh, oh, they burned them down. They killed them all, hunted them. You know the rest of the story. Let's keep going. We're just, it's a day of learning. <clears throat> Not at all. I guess, uh, this is just uh, something I just couldn't help researching before I got to the stuff that I had planned. It's just, this is a throw in with the extra rap song and my unusual good nature just because people don't want to hear a funny voice every now and then no thank you robot trolls Mabala was a small fortress town known to chief tuscaloosa in 1540 it was known to him or was he the king of it in a region region of present day central Alabama. The exact location has been debated for centuries. Uh huh. But they know what it is now. Malibu was a Trojan horse constructed as a fake village. It concealed more than 2,500 native warriors who had been gathered in 1540 by their chief, their King Tuscaloosa to attack a large part of the invaders in the Muskegee territory. And you know that Merle Haggard was a little bit off base in that Oklahoma. I'm proud to be an Okie 
from Muskogee. It wasn't from, you know. Maybe you could have been an Oki or a Muskogee, but I don't know if you could be them both. Unless you were a Muskogee, got transferred there. You didn't seem that big, Merle. First met, they tried to trick him there. It was like a last ditch effort, you know. Oh my goodness. We know what they're going to do. They tried to set him up, but DeSoto said he sniffed it out. And although he got his ass handed to him, he still was able to win in the long run. So that's the battle of it. More hidden history. Another tab is waiting here as I see what's going on here. You know, this this is what really... uh, When they discovered after the... You know, during the time when the wheats and the tares were maturing, that there was uh, some uh, lost tribes of indigenous that had spread out that had done quite well for themselves without metal and things like that. Because when they got the message to head for the hills, they didn't have any. But they still had a way to make a living and knew how to do it and had lived their lives. And when uh, the broke, bankrupt Spain at the time, had to pay back its debts. They came and raided and took over. And then the other country said, hey, why didn't we think of that? Instead of mourning for God's people. So this is where it all started. And these, you know, you recognize these star forts, the golden age. You know it just happened. You know it just ended. That's what all of these lessons last weekend and continuing through Monday the 3rd and today the 4th. You know where we see these pictures. It was the golden age. The 290 years of the resets. What's going on? And now, as I told you, we're in that last 45-year period spoken of by Daniel. ETG, Chosen King, has made some good videos about America being the two promised land. He suggests that the real River Jordan is the Mississippi. He says the southern states are neighboring Africa. That's why the south has a high percentage of blacks. They're indigenous, not descendants of slaves from Africa. There's much of that I agree with. I'm on a time limit here, though. Thank you so much. To re- The genetic makeup that this man is describing about the people from Tuscaloosa is correct. I know this to be true because I myself was born and raised in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Now, Pope in this bitch, traditions of the Aborigines and Native Americans were reincarnation, the ancestors. And as black people you know this to be true because your great grandmama and your aunties would say that child been here before or what about deja vu reoccurring dreams or you are drawn to things that existed hundreds or even thousands of years ago 